Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Very excited to be doing my second interview in my brand new studio, which I am still working on, but um, just so excited to be here. And I'm so excited to have this gorgeous creature here who literally looks like she matches the set. And look, we kind of, we sort of match a little bit. Like it's kind of, it's kind of, I'm wearing like the conservative mom version of her sexy outfit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let me introduce to you guys, Kelly Roses. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here too. Again, sorry for pushing your time back all the time. No, no but technical difficulties and I didn't want to like force you to wait around for us I to start because it's been yeah it's been a day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and I was actually complaining earlier to about oh see that look I got stuff on it already so I <laughs> made this horrific mistake this morning you guys of putting on these fake nails because my nails look so fucking ratchet right now so I'm like I'll do press on nails but they're like this they're like two different nail sizes See so you know, how this side is longer than this side? Like I didn't realize now that you pointed out when I was putting bit. it on. Yeah. Like there's two sets. There's like a longer one, or I don't know. Maybe I put the thumb one on like all of <laughs> all around the finger. Yeah. So I've just been cursing oh, these all day, and I was noticing your beautiful nails. Thank you. Um, and you have long nails. Like, do you yes. normally have your nails like that? I do. And you are able to function? Yep. Able to wipe my butt and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you just, it's like you get used to it. You don't, like, struggle yeah. with buttons? So the only thing I really do struggle with, which is super frustrating, is when you put, so say you're, like, pay for parking and you're yeah. getting out and you're trying to pay for it and you put it in the little slot, uh -huh. your card. Yes. It's hard to get my fingers all the way in to pull it all the way out. So sometimes I have to go like this to like oh, try to get the card shit. out. Yeah. Oh my God. So that's so frustrating. That's, that's one so thing I haven't been able to adjust to from having You're going to need to bring nails. like a pair of tweezers with you. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> Just pick it out. I've literally asked people like on the street like, hey, can you help me like get my card <laughs> <laughs> but that's like also so adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't get my out. <laughs> but it's important, you know, for girls to yes. have nice nails. I mean, you're shooting and, you know, yeah. you want it to look good. Definitely. I was thinking about the time that I once, I once, there was a period of time that I was shooting girls for um, a client of mine and they decided that they didn't want professional models, right? They yeah. wanted to bring in like cam girls and girls who'd never been on a professional set. Totally. There was this one girl who was super sweet. And to be fair, like, she didn't know. Yeah. She'd never been on a professional set before. Yeah. She'd only, like, you know, webcam from her bedroom. Totally. But her fucking nails were so disgusting to the point where I had to give her a pedicure in <laughs> no. the makeup chair. She was in the makeup chair, and her feet were so bad. Oh. She had, like, skin peel, like, peeling off of them. Oh. Not just calluses, but, like, yeah. big pieces of skin coming off that I had to trim off oh, no. with fucking scissors and she had hair on her feet like oh. not just a little bit of hair like oh. you know we all have a little bit of hair on our toes like yeah totally full hair on her feet Furry. I had to ask her to shave her feet oh my god I've never had to ask someone to shave their feet before it was that's crazy it was truly terrible that is awful and then I had to like clean her nails and paint them and the whole, and I remember just sitting there being like, like on my fucking knees, like giving this bitch a pedicure, being like, what the fuck? Yeah, you're like, I should be getting paid extra for this. Yeah, like, I just like, I shouldn't be dealing with this at, at all. all. Yeah, literally. So oh my, my point is, is yes. I appreciate the professionals who come with their nails done, yeah. even though I don't understand how you get anything done with those things. Yeah, I usually don't have my nails like this fun, but... Um, it was Valentine's Day, and I was like, why not? So, yeah. but I usually have them like more tame. I don't usually do red and stuff, but okay. yeah. <laughs> do you, <laughs> are they usually like pointy and long? Or yeah, but I do, do love my pointy nails. You know, you need weapons when you're out there in those streets. <laughs> <laughs> Cat claws. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever have problems with doing girl girl and like finger insertion? Uh, yeah, I, will... I get too scared to finger insert. So mm -hmm. yeah, the ladies. So I have some like lady friends that are like, 
I like being fingered and it makes me upset that you can't put your fingers in my pussy. I'm like, I can, but I'm just scared I'm going to like poke you because it's so different putting your fingers into somebody versus like yourself. You can like feel the walls yeah. of where you're yeah, going yeah, yeah. kind of more. Yeah. But I'm like, God forbid I stab you. Like, yeah. I feel so bad. That would not be a fun. Yeah. Do you ever, so Jules Blue actually was the one who introduced me to like the lesbian manicure. Oh, yeah. Well, which the is fingers. the two, I think it's these two fingers, right? Yeah. That are short. Yeah. And the rest of them are long so that get in there she can get in there and you do, and so i guess if you ever see a girl out there who is these two fingers short and the rest are long Jeez. you know yeah. it's a secret yes <laughs> so you Love live in it. colorado yes and you come out here for shooting i do yeah how frequently do you come out i well i travel somewhere for at least a week every month and then i try to stay home for three weeks mm-hmm. um i do go to california the most um, so I don't know. It can be anywhere from like lately. I've been here almost every month at the beginning of this year, but I do try to like mix in Florida and Vegas and New York and everything. Do so. you, do you like, what's keeping you in Colorado? Do you have any plans to move out to any of the like bigger production cities or do you like where you're at? Um, I actually like it there. I bought, just bought a house out there. Yeah. So, um, which it, is probably affordable. Very. Compared to Jordan, yeah. house here in LA. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So got my first home out there. Um, I have like friends and some family out there as well. So that's what kind of like state makes me stay. But mm-hmm. and I, it's, it is nice because before I'm from California, but and then I lived in Florida for a little bit. And I'm like, I love being where everything is, all the shooting and stuff. But it is kind of nice to like detach and be able to kind of like take a break when I go home, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's so quiet, mm-hmm. which is nice. Do you feel like that helps you? like with your mental health in a way because yes. it's really forces that separation from your work and you don't get yes. caught up in all the day-to-day bullshit. Yeah. And the thing was too, for me is when I was in Florida or even LA, like I would get calls all the time. Hey, we have this cancellation. Like, I know you can mm-hmm. come and I would never be able, I've never said no. Like mm-hmm. I've never been able to like, of course I'm going to go. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? I'm not doing anything. Of course I'm going to be there, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but so it's kind of nice. Like, okay, you have to plan it during this time. And then it's kind of like I'm not coming out there Mm -hmm. any other time, you know. Mm -hmm. So it is nice. And it's nice to, like you said, for your mental health to kind of like separate the two. And it's just crazy in Colorado. In Florida and California, I was like recognized more. Mm. In Colorado, people are so much more shy kind Mm. of. Like I really – I've had a few people like recognize me. But in comparison to the two, it's like definitely – feel so much more like low key over there. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. It must be nice to just be able to be like yourself. Yeah. Do you find that living in Colorado and you said you have friends and family out there? Mm-hmm. Do they how do they feel about you working in the adult industry? Are you able to like be somebody else entirely and not have like your career come up a lot? Yeah, I feel like definitely with my like family, they it was really hard for them to like accept it in the beginning of my mm-hmm. career. And then we've gotten to a point to our, our relationship that like they'd rather have a relationship with me yeah. than like not, yeah. they don't want to hear it. They don't want it in their face, but right. you know, they're, and they're not going to go out of the, their way to find it. But mm. so that's really cool. And it is, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice to like kind of just separate the two. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, my husband and I have talked about moving out of state, um, mm-hmm. and I always felt that I couldn't because my job keeps me here. The, yeah. the podcasting, which I relate totally. to you in person, and I was shooting a lot, um, but it, it does feel like, I don't know, and mostly my family kept me here. Yeah. Um, but it does feel like it would be really nice to live somewhere else. Yeah. Just to just detach. Yes, you know? totally. And it's nice, too, because I, <laughs> I feel like in Colorado, like, I can look more bumish like in sweatpants hair not done like no makeup nothing and like it's like kind of more accepted whereas like in california or florida it's like people recognize me more often so i want to make sure i look good mm. you know what i mean whereas yeah. i'm like i feel super incognito in Colorado. yeah <laughs> you yeah <know? laughs> i always so am, i always find that when i travel to other states because i grew up in la and i've lived mm. here my whole life yeah. that I'm always surrounded by like skinny beautiful people yes. all the time yeah. and so in my head I feel like this is what everybody looks like totally. and then when I go to other places and yeah. people are normal <laughs> looking I'm like 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm not that fat. Oh, okay. Yeah, literally. <laughs> That's so true. I feel that. But it just feels like totally. more grounding. Yeah. And it's just not so much about appearance. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I love LA. I've lived here my whole life, like I said, and I grew up here and I have family here, but yeah. sometimes, yeah. It's hard to turn off. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, talk about how you got into the adult industry in the first place. Yeah. So um, when I was 18, my best friend, like growing up, introduced me to webcamming. Mm -hmm. And um, so funny. She was like, why don't we – I was working at Nordstrom's full time um, and going to college. And then my best friend was like, why don't we do webcam? We could do Girl Girl together. And I did one show together, and I literally made, like – my whole paycheck in a week in that one night. And I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> um, but it was so funny because she was like, you need a name, you know. Um, her name her name was on her wall because it was like her parents' house. <laughs> and so it said like, sweet dreams, Mariah, like on the wall. <laughs> so she had to use her name. Oh, no, for the from first like part. when you were a kid. <laughs> like I have like my daughter's name, yes. Violet, like above her crib. <laughs> and so- Violet, if you ever start webcamming, we got to redecorate yeah. your room. <laughs> like she's like you gotta think of a name so I was like okay and so I was like looking all around her room and I was like I saw these sandals like that are from Amazon and it said K-A-L-I on it and I was like oh that's kind of cool because I'm like from California Mm, you know and a Cali with the K kind of sounds like a real name sort of and I had my half half of my back was already tattooed with roses so I was like okay and then Rose will be my last name. And so I webcammed for like two and a half years. And then I was recruited basically um, for it to be a Twisty Street of the Month in 2016. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then, and then I dated a guy in the porn industry. And I was just webcamming. And I was like dabbling kind of into like doing my own content. But this was like, before that was like really a big thing so it was more so like I dated a guy in the porn industry and he was like you're gonna do these scenes with me and I was like okay you know and I was just submitting by the man at the time Mm -hmm. I was just young and yeah so um I did my first anal scene for free oh no (laughs) no yes and it was on his website it got on Pornhub like I didn't even have the content for a really long time yeah, and then but then Pornhub like went through that phase where they were paying people. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I finally got my money like four years later. But <laughs> yeah, after like it had already been viewed a million times. Yeah, and so at that point, the person that recruited me, they were like, "You're not going to be able to get it down, so you might as well just like do porn," you know? Yeah. So I did. Yeah. And I love it. I mean, yeah. t- to be <laughs> fair, crazy. that is that is not untrue, yeah. but that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. I mean, yeah. were you already thinking? That it was a career that you could do? Yeah, it was hard because um, I got into webcamming and with my family, like, they were already, like, they didn't know anything about it. So, like, my family was like, you're going to get AIDS, you're going to die. And I'm like, I'm fucking myself. (laughs) So, first of all, like, get your facts right. (laughs) You're going to get AIDS and die. Yeah. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) And so then, um, but then, yeah, so then I just started doing, so it was like a slow, gradual thing. I wasn't Mm -hmm. trying to, like, get right into it right Mm -hmm. away. Honestly, I was making so much money on my own doing webcam Mm -hmm. that I didn't have to do porn. Mm -hmm. But but also, too, when I was doing webcam, like, since everyone saw that anal video, they would come into my room and, like, bring a guy, do anal, like, Mm -hmm. you know. And it was like. Once you go anal, you can never go back. It's just, like, always just pushing the envelope. Yes, literally. So. So do you do webcamming now? I don't anymore. No. Okay. And yeah. what you're doing, are you, you're still shooting for brands? Yes. I'm assuming you probably have an OnlyFans. Yes, definitely. And that's probably where you're, if you're like most girls, it's probably where you're making majority of your money. Yeah, for sure. Do you miss the webcamming at all or was it really draining? Because I know that sometimes girls will be on for like eight hours a day. I know. There was times where I was on for like 12. Like, what? And I mean, I would take like breaks, but I worked for this company that – they 
did Live Jasmine, and uh-huh. it was like a house, but there was two guys running it. Really wasn't a good situation. Oh, I no, found it on Craigslist. Cam- oh, no, <laughs> you were in a cam girl's house from Craigslist? <laughs> yeah. No. This is like the <laughs> beginning of like a disaster. A disaster. Story. <laughs> oh. And like they would give me like uh, Adderall to stay up. And then, like, I couldn't even take a break to eat. So I'd be eating nachos, like, in, you know, when you're waiting to go to private. Uh-huh. Like, that, I don't know, like, that open, free, like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be, like, twerking and eating nachos. <laughs> like, just zoomed into my ass. I'm like, I got to eat, all right? Yeah. Spicy. Spicy. <laughs> oh, no, that's funny, but also not yeah, funny at crazy. all. Yeah, that's really, did you have a hard time getting out of that? Or did they just? Yeah, they try to scare me, too, because it was just such a bad situation. There was like a, it was really a couple and abuse. There was like, it was bad. Like it was really bad. And they wanted me to move with them to Florida. But I was like, I don't know anyone in Florida. And I don't want to get kicked out on my ass in Florida. Like yeah. I'd rather get kicked out where I like know people in California versus like a whole new state. And they like got all mad about that. So I eventually got kicked out. Because actually, too, um, on Live Jasmine, you know, they have all these rules. Like, you can't be underage. You can't pretend, pr- like, role play underage. Right, right. Um, you can't be do incest or anything. Mm-hmm. And I went to a private show, and some guy was like, yeah, you're 15 and my sister, right? And I was like, yeah. Take it down. <laughs> oh, wow. So then they kicked me out of the house. They were like, get out of the house and stuff. So, and then I went back to Corona because I was actually in Sherman Oaks that I ended up doing all of that. Mm-hmm. And I went back to Corona and started doing webcam like on my own with my best friend that I started with. Right. Yeah. Is that company, those people still around? No, thank God. Yeah, I feel like I've heard a lot of stories like that from girls who've gotten into that that situation. Awful, and, but yeah. I think a lot of those are those are kind Dying of gone out. now. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. because, you know, platforms like OnlyFans just give girls yes, so much it's personal freedom. So awesome. It's crazy. Love that for us. <laughs> wow. I yeah. am I am so sorry to hear about that. Um, so you were started off as Kelly Rose, yes. But now you're Kelly Roses. Yeah. How? What did the? How did the last name change? Yeah. So I went to go get my name trademarked because I got my name tattooed on my leg. So I was like, might as well just seal the deal that this is my name. You know. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. Just get <laughs> it on paper too. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So when I went to go and do that with my lawyer, he was like. There is a Christian country singer named Callie Rose, and if that's her real name, like, she can sue you. Um, So I ended up, I was like, fuck. And then I was like, okay, Callie Rose is. I was like, just slap an ass, and it worked out because I had this tattooed on me. I was just going to say, like, you can't (laughs) go back and change that. (laughs) I lucked out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that I was able just to slap an ass because that would have sucked. That's funny. That's not like – I don't know if you know this. I read this randomly, but you know The Weeknd, obviously. Yeah. So when he started, there was another band or something called The Weeknd. Oh. um, And they were trademarked. So he actually Mm -hmm. had to take, like – that's, like, why he took, like, the E out of Weekend. Oh, I didn't know that. So that he could use that. And then, obviously, he blew up and whoever the other people were did not – did not not so much. (laughs) Yeah. So, but, yeah, you were lucky that you didn't – (laughs) yeah. <laughs> I just go to my tattoo artist. I'm like, just slap it as. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so why do roses have such a significance for you? Yeah. So um, my sister passed away when I was about to be six. She was three. Um, and she had cerebral palsy. She wasn't supposed to live as long as she did, but she did. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know. I just, I've had a lot of people pass away in my life, unfortunately. So I feel like roses kind of always followed me. So I felt like, I don't know, it was like symbolic to kind of like re- represent the loved ones that had passed away. Yeah. So, yeah. God, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah. yeah my, my dad passed away. Actually, yesterday it was a month. Mm. And, um. It's been a, I mean, I've never been through like the grieving process before oh gosh, and it's, yeah. it it's is hard. something else, man. Yeah. It is really, I mean, I don't know if you dealt, it sounds, sadly, it sounds like you've had a lot of experience in this area. Yeah. Um, but it's like weird because I allowed myself a lot of like emotional, like grieving. Like I've, I've allowed myself to feel the feelings. That's I've good. like yeah. sobbed myself into like a puddle of tears, like yeah. on a daily basis, like yeah. in my bathroom. Cause my dad and I were really close. Yeah. Um, 
And now like, and it feels weird because it's only been a month, right? Yeah. But I already feel like I'm coming. I mean, that's why I'm back to work and doing interviews. Like yeah. I feel like I'm coming out of it and I'm like, you know, doing okay. I mean, I, you know, as had okay a breakdown possible, again yeah. last night, but you know, overall, yeah. like, um, and I feel guilty about that. No. Do you, did you ever feel that? Like, I almost yeah. feel like I should be like, I'm not on honoring his memory by being like, totally fucking miserable no all the time, right? but I also always believe that the person that passed wouldn't want you to be like that and they wouldn't want you to like remember them and it always be such a sad thing like I yeah. would I would like to think that they would feel that you know when you think about them you think of like the good stuff eventually you're able yeah. to just remember that and it's like a happy memory and not just like super you know no sad. totally yeah. I feel that and I know that he would be like that and I would feel the yeah. same like I wouldn't want people to yeah. like you know yeah totally be so sad about it but it is like a strange it's, thing and it's you know the, I mean the adult industry has honestly been so awesome so many people have reached out to me and like awesome. been you know who've also lost yeah. people close to them parents and stuff and have just yeah. you know just been really great and you know yeah. everyone said like grieving is different for everybody it, that's so true I totally agree with that yeah, so Definitely. I guess it's – and I guess it's, like, a process, right? I mean, if it we're is. lucky enough to have a close relationship with our parents, it's something that we all go through, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is, like, such the bummer. It's such a bummer. Yeah. Death is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, this sounds like a great time to take a commercial break. And when yes. we come back, um, we're going to talk about dicks because yes. nothing cheers me up <laughs> faster than talking about dicks. No, seriously, Definitely. though, we are going to talk about <laughs> We're going to talk about dicks. Yes. So <laughs> hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, plus enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. All right, everyone, we're back. I promised you we were going to talk about dicks. We are going to talk about dicks. Yes. <laughs> um, one question that I get a lot, I'm sure you've seen this show up in your DMs as well, mm. um, is penis size important to you? Is it important to women in general? Is it important to you? So I feel like before I got into the industry, I was a size queen. Like mm. I was like, oh my God, bigger is better. And then I got to porn and I was like, okay, there's <laughs> too big and that's it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, so I I feel like um, the older I've gotten, the more I've come to appreciate just a uh, average dick. The boyfriend penis, yes, yeah. can go in all the holes, you know, <laughs> and it doesn't hurt. It is perfect. I love that. <laughs> I'm here for it. That is such a great answer, and it's like you know, that's perfect too because. As we know, you know, there's a lot of men that are out there that are insecure about their penis size. They yeah. watch porn. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people get their sex education from porn, which is yes, not yeah. what should happen. Yeah. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah. But they'll see a video with Dread. Yes. And they'll be like, oh, my penis yeah. should look like that. Like, yeah. look how happy she is. And I will never be able to make a woman feel that way. But I think what they don't realize is that like any other form of entertainment, it's theatrics acting. it's yeah. acting not to say that like people don't have no. authentic orgasms or anything like totally. that because that absolutely happens and that people don't enjoy each other yes. but we are in the business of entertainment yeah so those ungodly huge penises <laughs> yeah. are literally like why these guys are in this industry like yeah not everybody can play in the nba you know exactly and like make fucking slam dunks but yeah. that doesn't mean like you're any you can't like play basketball with your yeah. friends and like have a great time totally 
So I just, I just think that what you said is so great because it's like, yeah, yeah, when you have experience with those huge dicks all the time, it's a little much. Yeah. And sometimes like it can hurt. Like after you're like, my stomach hurt. (laughs) Something got rearranged while we were doing that. (laughs) So what, you know? what do you have like a length that you yeah. think is like a good size? I mean, six to seven inches. Like, yeah, even I would even say five and a half. Five and a half is the apparently the yeah. average size yeah. of a man's penis. Yeah, I feel like that's perfect. What would you do if you were on a date with a man who had a micro penis? <laughs> How would you like? I sorry, I asked myself this question. I mean, I'm yeah, married, so I don't need to worry about it anymore. But yeah, like, yeah. what do you do in that situation? I don't know. Just try to make it work, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could assume he's really good at oral. Yes, yeah, that's so true. He can make it up for it in other ways. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just, I don't know why. I, I think about this clearly way too mm. often. But it just like, what a horrible <laughs> situation to be in, and one hundred percent not the guy's fault. And it's no, so yeah. unfair. Yeah. To, you know, be to be born with with physical issues such as that. And I always wonder, like, how do they how do they surpass that first yeah. day? I'd almost like to, you know, I'm going to put this out there. If there is a man out there with a micro penis, I want to interview <laughs> yeah. you. Not in like yeah. a shameful way, but like I kind of want to know how you navigate like life the, with the life and yeah. like dating um, because that's that's rough. Yeah. I am, you know how I guess there's a doctor in Miami that can like enlarge your dick. I wonder if that's a thing. Like, can you do that for a micro penis? I, I don't know. I don't know Maybe. Either. Okay, I'm gonna put this out can there. You Doctors out? that <laughs> enlarge penises. I want to interview you. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you can get like a little bit of a dick enlargement. I do yeah, know that guys the girth get, rate that too. guys get penis pumps put in. I think oh, it makes their yeah. dicks automatically bigger because of the way that the pump works and fills it with more blood, just kind of stretches it out more. Yeah, right. So yeah. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of incredible surgeries yes. out there for people. Like, So I learned from um, a uh, from Lucy Hart, actually, who mm-hmm. is a trans, trans woman, yeah. um, that you can get butthole surgery to make it easier for you to have anal. And apparently this is like well known in the gay community. There's a doctor, I think he's in New York. You guys can go back and watch my interview with Lucy Hart and she'll talk about it. But there's a doctor who specializes in like reshaping your butthole, your anal cavity actually. I think he can also like do your butthole in a cosmetic way. Yeah. And make it like more comfortable to take big dick. Oh my gosh. Because I think some pe- everybody's anal cavity is different. Some yeah, right. Take back. Other people's like might go down at an angle. So like if the penis comes in and like yeah, hit hits the wall, stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it doesn't totally. bend. It's uncomfortable. But if you like straighten out that anal cavity, maybe you Perfect. can win like that best anal scene award that you've been <laughs> yeah. coveting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. I might have to check that out. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah. I was just that like, is wow. that's science. Awesome. Yeah. It's fucking science, man. It's incredible. That's so cool. That's cool. So, um, what are what kind of scenes do you like to shoot the most? Um, I love doing probably I love threesomes, like a good threesome with three people who really want to be there. Mm-hmm. I think that's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Girl, like boy, girl, girl or boy, boy, girl or whatever. Either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it just like the, just more energy in the room? Yeah. There's just more energy, more to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Do don't you, know. Have you ever been in a threesome where you felt one person like got left out a little bit? Yes. I've been in some like bigger like I've done a like a I guess it was a five sum or something um and it was it was for a shoot and you could I could tell like these two girls did not like girls like Mm. and that was rough because I felt like I was kind of like overcompensating for everything Mm. kind of you know but and that was like when I was a contract girl for a little bit so Mm -hmm. I was like really trying to overcompensate (laughs) felt like that was my job but (laughs) I will say that like some of my listeners are surprised to hear that such things exist but girls who actually aren't into girls and even sometimes you only do girl girl yeah it's not that uncommon yeah what do you do in those situations overcompensate yeah (laughs) I'm like I guess I'm the one just looking everybody's pussy but you can just sit back (laughs) wait for the dick all right (laughs) 
<laughs> Spread those legs, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if you work with a girl like that, do you... I mean, there's this one girl in particular who is mm. rumored to, and I... It's hard for me to see because I may not have the right angle, but... If she thinks the camera can't see, she'll literally lick the side of your leg. Like, she won't actually eat you out. She'll just, like, lick the side of your leg because she's like, oh, I don't actually have to do this because the camera can't tell. Yeah. That's have you ever, you've never experienced anything like no. that? Not that bad? No. <laughs> I've But I have, like, there's some girls who, like, sometimes there's no camera on them and they'll just stop, you know? And, yeah. I, and I kind of get it. Like, okay, you're maybe tired or something. Yeah. But it is kind of, like, a little disappointing the worst i once was shooting so i don't know this isn't as common now anymore because like those big features that are coming out on dvd aren't as frequently made yeah but we would have to shoot softcore okay have you ever had to sh- you ever shot a scene where you have to shoot yeah. softcore yeah so i've done that I, I used to do quite a few for wicked so we'd shoot mm. the hardcore scene and mm. then we shoot the softcore scene yeah and i the girl literally told the other girl during the softcore scene she's like look she's like this is softcore so you don't actually have to lick my pussy. So can you just not? And I was just like, oh. <laughs> and the girl was like, uh, okay, okay. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just do this. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the thing too. Is like you don't want to feel like rapey. I know, you know. And it gets to a point where it's like, if you're not into it, like let me know because I don't want to like overstep boundaries yeah. or whatever, you know. Yeah, know. yeah. It's kind of uncomfy to be in that position. <laughs> How do you qu- question about that since the boundary checklist thing is something that's kind of new? Yeah. I'm assuming that you've worked on sets that have those now, yeah. right? How do how do you feel about those? Do those make you feel more comfortable on set? I do. I actually love that. I think it's a really good thing to like be able to, to everybody openly like talk about what they do and don't like, mm-hmm. especially the don'ts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like please don't do this, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really nice. Yeah, because I think that a lot of times before people would just assume that like yeah, they could read goes. you. Yeah, yeah or, or anything you. goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, or oh. you might feel weird speaking up and being like, yeah. "Hey, by the way, I don't like, like this. this," and then like yeah. you're the person who's like, eh, "I don't like this," as opposed yeah. to it being an open conversation where everyone gets to say their do's and their don'ts. Totally. Yeah, yeah. that's been like a big change in the adult industry that I've really liked. I love that. Yeah. So. Let's talk about sobriety, yes. one of my favorite topics. Yes. <laughs> um, so tell me about your sobriety journey and what is working for you today. Yes. So in 2020, I went to rehab for the third time. Um, I think for me, sobriety has been really hard. And the reason why I've gone so many times, too, was because um, just a lot of like childhood trauma and deaths and things that I wasn't coping with and just I was using drugs to like numb it and everything so by the third time I really really wanted something to change and I knew something had to change and thank god I did go to rehab that time because with the pandemic and like being alone and doing all the things I was doing probably wouldn't be here today (laughs) Wow. yeah so it was really important for me to go this last time um and I think what really helped me like navigate sobriety too was moving and I know they say like you know you can change people places and things but it's really like you you know you did what they call it geographic yes yeah but I really do feel like in some ways it did help me because I I was forced to make new friends or I was just forced to sit alone Mm -hmm. which is what I needed to do really was just sit alone with myself because I had been like self medicating and I started off drinking really young I had alcohol poisoning at 13. I went to rehab at 15 for doing drugs because I was, like, selling drugs in high school, and I was rolling on ecstasy every day. (laughs) Yeah, like, I was just doing crazy things super young, and, like, my family couldn't figure out why, like, Mm -hmm. you know, and I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't either until later this last time it was, like, because I tried to go to rehab again when I was 21, but I felt like 21, like, so yeah. hard, you, you know? know? <laughs> the age you start drinking. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, stop then. I'm not done yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had to run around for three more years. And then finally I was like, okay, I think we're good. You know, yeah. I've run around for like 
you know, 10 plus years doing crazy stuff. Like, yeah. I think it's time to, you know, change some things. But yeah. do you feel that it might be a challenge for you to stay sober being so young? Because getting young, I mean, you're 24 yeah. now? I'm 27. 27 now. Yeah. Um, that's actually funny. I got sober the first time when I was 20. Was I 27? I might have been 28. It was right before my 30s. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, getting sober that young is it's hard. It's hard. Do you feel like it might be a challenge for you? Yes. And like even me trying to just meet people in Colorado, mm-hmm. whether it's dating or friends, like it's been really hard because what's the first thing anyone says? Let's meet up for yeah. drinks. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. let me drink water, like, <laughs> while you drink and, like, you know, try not to be tempted to, you know, drink with you. But yeah. it's, yeah, it's been, it's been definitely hard. But what is nice is I do have a really great support system and I have friends who, I have, I've made friends who, like, love that I don't drink and love that I don't party, even though they do once in a while. But they're like, I love hanging out with you because I know I don't feel the pressure of doing those things, mm-hmm. you know, because it's so normalized. Like, mm-hmm. it's so normal for people to just go drink and yeah. party yeah. and do whatever. Yeah, when I was dating, I remember struggling with the same thing because I was yeah. like, okay, do I tell people that I yeah. don't drink before we go out for drinks or do I just yeah. say sure and order a club soda? Yeah. And then they give you that look. Yeah. And then you have to like explain. But you also don't want to be that person who's like, oh no. Yeah, like a downer or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like you don't want to make a big deal about it. Yes. Yeah. That was, yeah, I I feel you on that. I would be. And I don't mind if people drink in front of right. me. I just don't want them to like pressure me to drink or like. You know, and also, I, like, I don't want to, like, babysit you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, hopefully you have, you know, your limits and stuff. And yeah. you know what that is. So I don't have to deal with that. It would yeah. be nice. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's, yeah. I struggled with a lot of that same thing. Yeah. So you so you got sober. You said you went to rehab the third time during yeah. 2020. What yeah. what time – were we still in lockdown when you came out of it? Or? Yes. So I was – we were in – literally, I think – so I went to rehab two days before my birthday because mm-hmm. I was not in a good mental space, and I was like, I'm going to do something wild or I'm going to go to rehab. So I ended up going to rehab instead. And What month was this? January, I want to say it was like January 14th because my birthday is the 16th. January 14th, 2020? 2020. 2020. So it was literally right before lockdown. Right before. Like right before. Wow. It was crazy. Yeah. Because, you, yeah, getting into a rehab after lockdown would, is it's like impossible. near yeah. impossible. Yeah. That timing is amazing. It was amazing. Literally. Yeah. It like saved my life. Literally. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. So, so how long yeah. were you in for? Um, so I did inpatient for two months and then I did outpatient for four months and I moved to Colorado for the outpatient. Um, and then that was probably around like, um, end of February, probably more March was when they, especially end of March was probably when they were like, Hey, we're moving stuff online. So I was doing it all online, but I did have a taste of like NAA meetings like in person and loved those, especially in Florida. Loved the LGBTQ ones. Mm-hmm. Those are the best. There's but, a really fun, if you can yeah. find like the right meetings, yeah. they're really fun because I'm in a 12 totally. step program Yeah, and um, I struggle with that a lot because at the beginning yeah. I didn't want to go because I thought yeah. it was a cult. It was but full of a bunch of fucking weirdos and they talk about God and I was raised atheist like there were so many Many reasons for me not to go because you all are fucking weird yeah um (laughs) but once I found like the right meetings where I felt like and I met as they say you find your tribe then it was makes such a difference but it's funny now because sometimes I'll still go to meetings that are like terrible yeah and I'll be like if this was my first AA meeting I'd never come back literally like there's some like I still will go to meetings I'll be like this is awful uh, like yeah. awful they are not all good no and especially i feel like in smaller communities it's harder yes. to find good meetings oh my gosh yes when i first moved to colorado and i was trying to do some they had moved back to some meetings like um in person but it was like i was with the senior citizen group <laughs> and like we were in a basement of a church somewhere yep. you know and i was oh just God. like I don't think I want to be people like my age yeah. going through this, yes. you know, as much as I respect, I totally respect 
their journey. I think it's awesome to hear their stories. I just can't, like, we're not going to meet up to go to a movie later, you yeah. know? Like, you need to feel, it needs to feel relatable for you. Yes. You need to feel like you can see people who are living the sober life that you want to live, and yeah. that feels attainable to you. Yes. You know, yeah. that's so important. So important. It's funny because I hadn't been to, so I have like a weekly online meeting that's my home group and was yeah. my home group in Santa Monica when I was before COVID, and, mm. and we moved online, and I, I go every Saturday still. Yeah. Um, and so I hadn't been to an in-person meeting since mm -hmm. after COVID and then I had a baby and I just like didn't have time, but I did this online zoom meeting. So I finally yeah. was like, you know what? I feel like I need to go to an in-person meeting. Like I haven't been yeah. to one in a long time. <laughs> and I went to this one out in Thousand Oaks cause I now like live in Calabasas and I used to live in the city where like they were everywhere and there yeah. weren't that many. And it was in the basement of a church. And literally it was like 95% men over the age of 65. Literally. Which is okay. <laughs> That's fine. Like yeah. no problem with yeah. that. However, it was just one of those fucking meetings. And this poor girl was there, like one of the few other women that was there. Mm -hmm. And it was her first meeting and she was there on a DUI. So mm -hmm. she like didn't even know anything about the, she was just there. Yeah, she got fucking had to be there. Nudge yeah. from the judge, as they say, right? Yeah. She may not even have had a drinking problem. Maybe she just had a bad night. Who knows? Yeah. So you know how you go around the room and you like identify like, hi, I'm Holly. I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. And so it got to her and she was like, hi, I'm whatever her name is. She's like, I don't know. She's like, I'm just here, like, from the judge. Yeah. Which is like, okay, move on. Yeah. The, I swear to fucking God, the rest of the meeting was people commenting on whether or not she should have identified as an alcoholic. Oh, my God. This poor girl. She'd never been to a meeting uh, before in her life. Yeah, right? Yeah. You're not supposed to cross talk, which means you're not supposed to talk about other people yeah. in the meeting unless it's a speaker and you're identifying with their story. When people share, you're not, you're not supposed to comment on their shares, single people out. The whole like, meeting <laughs> was like, this one guy was like, she, you know, you, and of course he doesn't say her directly. Oh. He just says, you know, the girl who I d didn't identify as an alcoholic should have identified as an alcoholic because, you know, and then like the next person share was like, well, I don't think that we should pick on the person who didn't identify as an alcoholic. <laughs> Girl. And this girl was like <laughs> shrinking in the corner yeah. and I was like, oh, she's never coming back. Oh, she's yeah. never coming back. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so yes. So if you're struggling and you're interested in checking out um, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, just, you know, yeah. give it a shot. Go to a couple different meetings. It may not be for you. Yeah. But don't go to one and think they're all that, like that. Like that. Yeah. you know, they're different. Yeah, they are. Definitely. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what has been the greatest gift of sobriety for you? Um, I feel like my relationships with people are a lot better. Um, I feel like my relationship with myself is a lot better. Um, that's definitely been a gift. And also, too, just, like, learning about myself because I felt like – I had self-medicated myself for so long that I just didn't even know who I really was. What what do I really like? You know, so it's been really cool, like in a way, like dating myself or like just really getting to know myself, you mm -hmm. know, which I never would have done if I was still drugs and partying. <laughs> it's a crazy thing to have to feel your feelings, huh? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Like to sit in that uncomfortableness yeah. of like feeling the way that you feel. Yeah. That is fucking hard. Hard. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel, I don't know what the word is, like, you know what, jealous that you can't just check out? Yes. Oh, my gosh. There's so many times where I'll be, like, especially in the beginning of my journey, like, mm -hmm. I was just bawling my eyes out. I'm like, this sucks that I have to sit here and feel this. Mm -hmm. But I'm so grateful, you know, and I have I think throughout the, you know, few years that I've been doing it, I just feel like it you know, it really is worth it. And time has shown that it's, it's been worth it as rough as it's been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're so right. Because yeah. it's like, I mean, the escape, unfortunately, is only pushing the inevitable down the road, right? Literally. You're going to have to deal with Do those feelings eventually. Yeah. So you may as well get through it in that moment. Yeah. Because it will pass. Totally. But it's hard to, yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. The, especially at the beginning. It is, yes. that's really rough to get through those moments. And there was things like, especially in my younger years or like from the past that I was like, 
I would, you know, I'd be talking to my therapist or something. And I'm like, why am I so emotional about this? It's because I've never felt the feelings of all, from all those years. So like now I got to feel it like 15 years later. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you see the world differently now? I do in a way, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. What, how Definitely. do you think your perception has changed? Um, I think that, um, I don't know. I think I've just realized that life's m- like worth, worth living and mm. working on, you know, yeah. instead of just kind of, I feel like I was so autopilot too. like, mm-hmm. you know, it was such a scapegoat. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah. Do you feel like you have more hope now? Yeah, literally. Yeah. Definitely. There's nothing worse than to live without hope. That's the scariest thing. Yeah. And that was the thing too. I was like, so... It was so horrible, but I was just, like, totally okay with, like, ODing and dying. Like, I was in such a dark place Mm -hmm. that I'm, like, ugh, I'm so happy to not feel like that anymore. Like, yeah. 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 I I can relate. Definitely. There were some times I used to drive up to – because I used to work for my mom before I started off on my own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to drive up Malibu Canyon to get there. And that was when I was drinking in the morning. And I had, like, little bottles of fucking vodka, like – all over my stashed car, everywhere. stashed yeah. everywhere. And I just yeah. remember, like, thinking, like, what if I just floored it and just, like, drove off yes. the edge of the canyon? Oh, my god! Like, all of this would be over. I wouldn't have to feel this anymore. I know. But then, you know, like, yeah. I couldn't. I, like, I, I always, I always felt like my life was not supposed to be that way. I'm like, this yeah. is not the life I was meant to live. Like, no. I know there's something more to this. Totally. And as, as hopeless as everything feels now like there was still that glimmer of like no there's something more yeah and then also like the thought of like i could never do that to my family yeah you know that yeah. would just be awful Definitely. like they would never recover from that 100 percent. it's yeah. hard though yeah. i commend you it's a really tough journey to get through yeah you too thanks yeah. look at us <laughs> oh, look we're at killing us. it fucking killing it we're in the same outfit being sober yes. it's amazing <laughs> yeah. I love it. uh so you've been in the industry for a few years now yes um, any advice that you would give to new girls coming in? Um, hmm. Um, um, yes, I do actually. <laughs> Sorry, my like light bulb go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, through my journey of doing this job, I feel like, it was really hard for me to not be such a people pleaser and like too overly nice. Mm. So I would just say like, even if you are a really nice person or, you know, you, you notice, you identify that you have some people pleasing tendencies, Mm -hmm. like, please don't be afraid to speak up. Yeah. Please. Setting boundaries is so hard. Yes. I think that's one of the hardest things for people to accomplish. Like I still struggle with that and I'm like 44. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I feel like, too, like, there's so many great people in this industry, but there are some. It's like in the great industry. Yeah. There's always bad apples. Exactly. And if they see you're too nice, people will take advantage of you. 100%. And it's, you know, you don't want to. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it to be liked for two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then feel bad about yourself later. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. No, I agree with you. That's um, that's really good advice. Yeah. Um, Is there anything about the adult industry you would like to see change? Um, I would love for us to have more rights on these social media platforms. <laughs> I don't want to be discriminated anymore. <laughs> yeah, you lost a couple of Instagram accounts. Yes, yeah. so many. And honestly, they're just so inconsistent with the rules. Yeah. And I wish we just had more of um, like some sort of something that can stick up for us you know that has like a weight on things mm-hmm. you know like an advocacy yeah like the fsc except the fsc is but more power social media yeah social media. <laughs> but more power i mean yeah. but that's a thing right it's because these social media unfortunately they're private companies yeah so technically they, they can, can do, do whatever, whatever they want. want yeah but yeah it's interesting how you know there's a lot of discrimination laws out there but none of it applies to sex workers no to the career that you choose because i guess the this idea is that you've chosen this career right so yeah. this is a, a thing that you've chosen therefore we can discriminate against you because you had a choice in that matter whereas yeah. other forms like you know you were born a certain way totally but it's still i think ultimately in that sense then you know we just have to help to try to dispel the stigma around sex yeah and sex workers i agree what do you think the biggest misconception about sex workers is um, 
Well, I think a lot of people, I think some people are so uneducated that they think a lot of it is like sex trafficking, which is like a little alarming because I'm like, I don't know where you're getting this information from. Yeah, that's Police a big, don't spread that. Like That's a big hysteria point. And that, and that is so marketable. People love headlines love of sex trafficking that. in it. Yeah. And it gets a lot of attention. It's so bad. I'm like, no. And it's so misconstrued <laughs> and so misunderstood. Not to say that it doesn't happen. But yeah. But it does not happen on the level that you see in the media. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, for sure. There's actually a really good episode. Um, if you guys are interested in, in learning more about the hysteria around sex trafficking and how misappropriated it is. Um, it's called uh, You're Wrong About. It's a fucking fantastic podcast. And they do a really, really good in-depth episode around sex trafficking and around like these crazy headlines and how they are like they misconstrue statistics and how stories get twisted and and end up being not you know what you see in the headline because the problem is is that you'll see this big headline about like oh sex trafficking this and then it'll be some kind of it'll be some erroneous story however you never get the headline back go, sex trafficking story was wrong. Yeah. Sorry about that. This is actually what happened. Yeah. That headline doesn't happen. Just yeah. the first one, yeah. and then that's all anybody reads. And yeah. then it's word by it's, mouth. Everybody's saying if it's disproven, it it's yeah. like that that is never because that doesn't get clicks, you know? Yeah. And I think too, like people don't really understand how professional our industry can be. Mm-hmm. Like you know, so I, I don't know. I wish there was more representation of that portion of our yeah. industry. Yeah. Well, know? that's what we're trying to do here on this podcast yeah. <laughs> is to talk to actual yes. sex workers, people in the industry totally. who can talk about what it's actually like for them. Yeah. Overall, are you happy about being yeah. in the industry? I'm so Do grateful. you feel like you picked the right career path? A thousand percent. What is your favorite thing about being a porn star? Oh, there's so many. (laughs) Um, I love working with new people. I definitely get, like, you know, fun butterflies and, like, I don't know, just that fun new experience of working with somebody new, you know. Um, I do – and I do really enjoy acting as well. Mm. So I feel like, you know, that's really fun to have that incorporated sometimes, like, with certain – certain companies and things. Mm -hmm. Um, And, yeah, I think it's just opened a lot of doors for me, too, like opportunities. um, You were in a mainstream indie horror film, right? Yes. Yeah, I I forgot to mention that. Um, Yes. uh, You were the lead role in a Amazon Prime movie, The Spider. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes. So um, the director has done a few movies for Amazon Prime, and uh, he actually does, like, this site called The Kissing Channel, which mm-hmm. is, like, a kissing fetish thing he does. And he found me through camming. And um, then he hired me for The Kissing Channel. And then he was like, I, I wrote the script, and I, like, want you to be one of the leads. And I was like, well, I mean, like, I've acted in porn, but I've never, like, had a huge script. And, yeah. like, and luckily, his name's Desmond Heck. He's the greatest, like – fed me all my lines whenever I needed it. Like just super easy to work with. So nice, you know, so it was such a great experience um, for my first time doing something other than, you know, porn. What's the movie about? um, So basically there's a girl who's like, I'm like her doppelganger almost Mm -hmm. in a way or her like alter ego that she wants to become forever. And so she wants to be me and um so we have to kill like a certain amount of men because she goes to a psychic and they're like in order to become this girl like you have to kill five men and then (laughs) i end up being the seductress that kills men and then yeah it was actually really fun that sounds really fun yeah and we worked on it for so long but it was awesome i had so much fun doing it amazing yeah well kelly thank you so much for coming on it's been such a pleasure (laughs) <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes. You can find me um, on Twitter at Callie Roses. You can find me on Instagram at The Real Callie Roses. And yeah. Perfect. <laughs> and of course, you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Still on TikTok somehow. Maybe I won't be by the time this episode comes out. I know I always <laughs> say that, but I'm just like waiting to get deleted. But it's yeah. Holly Randall Unfiltered. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a Facebook 
um, that's actually been doing like really well. I, I didn't, it was weird. I like let it slide for a while and I had reels reposting from Instagram and oh, I thanks. looked and I had like 10,000 followers and I was like, whoa. So that's we've awesome. been working on that channel more and um, yeah, the page is really picked up. We'll probably be doing some live streams there. So definitely go check that out. It has a really weird fucking URL that is like a bunch of numbers and shit, and I don't know how to change it. <laughs> so just go to um, my link in bio, which is at my Instagram and on my uh, Twitter, and just click on that, and it'll have the link to Facebook. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>